Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today we're going to look at seven different firmwares available for the Odroid Go Super. You can see here I have them organized beautifully on top of a post-it note here. And I spent about a week testing out all these various firmwares, and today I'm just going to talk about which ones I like best, some of the features I like, gameplay, user interface, those things. We're going to start with some all-in-one firmwares like Recallbox and Botasera, as well as Emulec 4.0. We'll also talk about some Ubuntu-based ones like the Retro Arena as well as Retro Oz. We'll also talk about Retro Roller or RRVL, which is a very lightweight firmware. And finally, we'll finish off with Lineage OS, which runs Android 11. Now, my purpose in this video is not to convince you which one is best, but really just to give you all the available options and let you decide for yourself. But we'll also talk about my specific use case and why I like some more than others. All right, well, that's really about it. So let's jump right into it. Okay, we're going to start with Recallbox, and this is an all-in-one firmware. Now, this is available across several platforms, including Raspberry Pi, as well as other Odroid devices. And this was recently made available for the Odroid Go Super, and you can see here they have a very nice customized theme here. It has a nice balance between retro and modern aesthetics. Now, inside each of these systems, they put at least one game in there, and they're all open source games, so there's no copyrighted material on these. But it does give you a good example of how everything is going to look once you've loaded up with your own games. In general, the purpose behind Recallbox is to give you just an all-in-one gaming solution to make things very easy for you to navigate within the emulation station menu. And there are some features exclusive to Recallbox that I really like. But in general, if you're familiar with the emulation station, you're going to feel right at home with this one. One of the features I really do like is the BIOS checking section. In here, it not only will show you which BIOS are required, but it'll also say whether or not you have them, and then whether or not they match all of the features that you need available for each BIOS file. So it's a very easy way to figure out why it is your games aren't working. When it comes to gameplay itself, this is a very plug and play system. So you just load up your ROMs and you should be able to boot any of these games. And when it comes to lower end systems like Game Boy Advance, things like that, it's going to be beautiful. Now, it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that you can find on other firmwares, which we'll show later. But in general, if you want just some basic gameplay, this is going to be a good solution for you. When it comes to high-end systems, for example with PSP, this has not been modified or tailored specifically to the Odrego Super, so you're going to have just kind of mediocre performance with these. Now there's no instruction manual for this firmware, so for example I could not figure out the hotkeys in order to get into the emulator settings. So basically I could only run this on the default settings. Which is a little bit frustrating and it's very hard to kind of figure these things out. And one of the things about Recallbox is because it supports so many different devices, it's very hard to find specific Odrego Super advice because there's just so much information out there for the firmware in general, but not necessarily for the Odrego Super. Now, performance on Dreamcast is just the same as it is with PSP, but I will say in general, this is actually running at a lower resolution. This is a 320 by 240 resolution here, and you can see everything just looks kind of pixelated. And it just doesn't look very great on this nice display like this. Not only does it run slowly, it doesn't look good either. And again, a lot of this has to do with the fact that this firmware is probably not specifically optimized for this device in general. It just doesn't have the, all the work involved like you would with a dedicated firmware for the Odrego Super in particular. As you can see with Nintendo 64, it's using the MuPen 64 Plus standalone emulator, but there's all sorts of issues with it. For example, on the bottom right of the screen here, you can see that the heads-up display has all sorts of issues. It's not showing the map or anything else like that. Not the end of the world here, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of my experience when using the Recallbox firmware compared to the others. So let's move on to another one. Now here's Botasera. This is an all-in-one firmware as well, and it's also cross-platform. So it runs on Raspberry Pi, PC, Mac, and Odroid devices like this one. Now one advantage that Botasera has over Recallbox is that it does have some optimized emulators. And as you'll see here in a second, some of these run really well, and maybe even the best that you can find on any of the other firmwares. In general, it also uses an emulation station interface. So again, if you're familiar with that, you're going to be right at home here. One thing I appreciate about Botasera in particular for this device is that it has these preloaded bezels on each side, which really take up some of that extra space when you're using a 4x3 aspect ratio game. You can see here with Dreamcast, it's running a little bit slow, but it has that higher resolution. So it's running at a 640 by 480p resolution here. And so it looks a lot better than something that you would find on Recallbox. And it's just kind of amazing that it has not only the better resolution, but also the better performance. And it really goes to show that some of these firmwares are very different when it comes to performance. Now PSP in particular is really great on Botocera. I would say it's the best out of any of the firmwares that you could find. Here I'm running with a frame skip of one and I'm using a cap of 30 frames per second. So essentially you're running at a frame skip of two, basically, but as you can see, the performance is really nice on this. 
This is a really hard game to emulate, so the fact that it's running at all and running into playable speed like this, even with a little bit of frame skipping, is a very good sign for other PSP games. For example, Wipeout Pulse is basically unplayable on most firmwares. I'm using those same settings, so a cap of 30 frames per second and a frame skip of 1 here, and as you can see it's running really well. To me this is the best version of PSP that you can play on the Odrigo Super. I would say that Nintendo 64 performance on this is basically fair, it's about average, so as you can see games like F-Zero X here, which are fairly easy to run, are running just fine here on Botticera. But if you switch over to Mario Tennis, which is a game that's notoriously hard to emulate on the Nintendo 64, you can see you run into some issues. For example, the player shadows are hidden up there on the top left, and the user interface is just kind of weird, and obviously it's very slow too. So Botticera works great for some systems, but not great for others. Now there are some features in Botocera that I really enjoy. For example, this is the only firmware to date that has a working bezel project for all of the systems. Which means you can go into emulation station settings, and then go into bezel project, and then you can pick your systems and download the bezels for those systems. What that means is that when you're using no intro ROM sets, which is a specific naming convention for ROMs, just go ahead and Google that. If you find a no intro ROM set and you use those, when you load up the games, you'll have game specific bezels because it's basically looking for game names that match exactly to that no intro ROM set naming convention. And when you load them up, they work just like this. Now, if you don't want to go through all that hassle, you can also use system specific borders like you see here with Super Nintendo. Another thing I really like about Botocera is that it has this themes downloader icons. This is the only one that has it so far. And you can find this on 351 Elec on other RG351 devices, but it's really neat that it's on this device as well. Okay, moving on to another firmware. This is MU Elec. Now this is also an all-in-one firmware and also is cross-platform across AmLogic devices. There's actually a modified version of this firmware that ships with RG351 devices, but this one is the real deal. This is the one straight from MUELEC, and this is 4.0, which was recently released, and I really like it. I have a whole dedicated video to this firmware, so check that out on my channel if you haven't seen it already. I would say for performance across the board with this one, it's about average. The interface on this system is really good. Just getting in and out of games is just a very pleasurable experience, but when it comes to performance, you're not going to see any standout performance with this firmware, but everything at least is going to work well. So if you're looking for an all-in-one solution that's easy to navigate and fun to play with, this is probably a really good bet for you. As you can see here, certain games just don't play well. X-Men Legends 2 is kind of laggy on this. So you're going to have to be picky with those higher end systems because some games just aren't going to play well, while others will. And that kind of goes part and parcel with emulation in general with a low powered chipset like the one on the Odroid Go Super. But same thing here, Nintendo 64 performance is just about average here. One of the things that really excels on Emulec 4.0 is the number of ports they have available and how well these ports have been made. So for example, I have dedicated videos about the Sonic the Hedgehog ports, but let me talk about Diablo for a second because this is pretty cool too. So this Diablo port will automatically scale to your large screen device. And I've tried playing this on a 3.5 screen device like the RG351 devices, and it's just kind of small and cramped. On this one, it's much better. It's bigger and beautiful. Now I mentioned the bezel project with Botocera, and that's also kind of working with Emulec right now. It's in a beta phase right now, but I expect in the future we're gonna see a better integration of bezel projects. So you'll see these by game bezels, which are really awesome. In general, I really like using a Nintendo and Super Nintendo games with these bezels. For me, it just kind of rounds out that gaming experience nicely. Okay, let's move on to another one. This one is called Retro Roller Void Linux. Now this one is very unique because it actually just boots right into RetroArch. It's very RetroArch centric but there are some nice tweaks in here as well. One of the advantages of this firmware is that it has a very low overhead, which means that it's not gonna take up a bunch of resources by running emulation station or anything else like that. You just get right into the games. Now that being said, this is not for the faint of heart. I would say if you're familiar with how emulation works in general and you like using RetroArch, this is gonna be a really great solution for you because you can jump right into the games, but you have to be comfortable doing things like creating playlists within RetroArch and navigating through that system. Now, if you want to put in the time and figure out how all that works, this could really pay off for you. I've read on different forums that a lot of people think that this has the best Dreamcast performance, as well as some others work really well too. Now, I spent about a half hour with it and I didn't unlock all of its features, but I definitely saw that it has a lot of potential. In general, playing different Dreamcast games, I definitely saw some really great performance here, probably the best I've ever seen. But it wasn't perfect across the board, so for example, when I was playing with the standalone PSP emulator, I got about the same amount of performance that I found in Emulec. So I think that Botocera still has the best PSP performance, but when it comes to Dreamcast, I thought it was really good. 
in full disclosure, I couldn't get Nintendo 64 to work at all. So I'm not really sure how that one actually plays out. And again, I think that's just a matter of how much time you need to invest to figure out how to get all these emulators and ROMs to run. So if you're very comfortable with emulation and kind of jumping into it, if you're an advanced user, this is going to be a really great solution. Okay, time to move on to our Ubuntu based systems. We're going to start with Retro Arena or the RA. Now this one I've also shown off in my Odroid Go Super Impressions video. Now this one I like to call the Kitchen Sink Firmware, and that's because it runs over 100 systems and various RetroArch cores as well. The developer behind this firmware, his name is Slaminger, and he just kind of likes to throw everything in there and let the users figure out which ones they want to use. And I think that's a really neat approach. So you'll be able to find things on here that aren't available on other firmwares. For example, he recently ported over Counter-Strike as well as Half-Life Blue Shift. And as far as I could tell in my recent testing, this one is the only one that can run Counter-Strike. And it runs basically the same way that any of the Half-Life ports work, but as you can see here when I'm plugged into the internet, I can find open rooms where people are still playing Counter-Strike, which is just crazy. It's been like 20 years at this point. Now a lot of these groups and rooms have been modded, you know, they're like very specific rooms, so it's hard to just jump in and play a game of like vanilla Counter-Strike. So you can see when you start up a room here, it makes you download all of the unique assets for that specific map. And in general, I've probably tried this half a dozen times, and yeah, you can load into a map, but I'm not really sure how to actually get it to work or how to actually play a game. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm just not very familiar with the Counter-Strike community at this point. I mean, sure, back in the day, I played this game on like my gateway PC back in like 2001, but man, it's a whole new world near. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can definitely play Counter-Strike. Now, Nintendo 64 performance on Retro Arena is probably some of the best that I've seen on any of these firmwares. It does have some shading and coloring issues, so the lighting is just not perfect on these. But when it comes to performance and like smooth gameplay, this is probably one of the best I've seen. So if you're really into Nintendo 64, Retro Arena might be your best bet. A good test example is Paper Mario, because there's always a lot of visual glitching with this game, especially in the beginning part of it. And as you can see here, there's very minimal glitching across the board. This is probably the best visual representation I've seen of Paper Mario on any Nintendo 64 emulator running on an RK3326 chipset, which is what you find here on the Odraco Super, as well as the RG351 devices. So I think that's a really great sign. Now Retro Arena also takes advantage of some standalone emulators, for example the Scum VM emulator. It works really, really nicely on this device. As you can see here, the menu is nice and large, and the gameplay is also stretched across the screen in a way that's very easy on the eyes. So if you love your old point and click games, Retro Arena might be a good solution for you. Okay, another Ubuntu based firmware is Retro Oz, and this is actually a fork of Arc OS, which is a firmware available on the RGB 10, RK2020, Odroid Go Advance, as well as the RG351 devices. So this developer went and they took that ArcOS firmware and then they ported over to the size of the screen and the controls and everything else available on the Odrigo Super. And I really love this one. And that's partly because I really love ArcOS, but at the same time, this developer has spent a lot of time getting everything to work. For example, you can swap out the various themes, which are all very handheld centric and look very good on this device. In general, the amount of care that this developer put in here is very impressive, especially because it's a one person team. Okay, so we've been at this for like 17 minutes at this point. Let's do a cat break here. Here's chicken. It's funny how every time that I start filming something, she just knows and she just jumps on my lap and tries to get involved. So I'm just going to indulge her here and let, let you guys get a few of her as well. Okay, let's get back to work. RetroOz also has per system bezels, as you can see here with Sega Genesis, and I really enjoy this for 16-bit and 18-bit games. It just covers up those black bars that you typically would see with a 4x3 display. One thing I really like about RetroOz is that it uses the upgraded DS emulator called Drastic, which is also available on Retro Arena. I think in particular the Odrigo Super really excels with Nintendo DS gameplay, and it's the best on RetroOz and Retro Arena. Now, speaking of the best, this is the only firmware that has the Super Mario 64 standalone port on it, and it's actually running the ArcOS port of Mario 64, and it is just beautiful. I've talked about this a couple times now. As you can see, it takes advantage of the entire 16x9 display, so it spreads it out into widescreen, and it runs at 60 frames per second. This runs better than the Nintendo Switch version of this game. It's the best I've ever seen. So if you love Mario 64, RetroWaz is the firmware for you. And hopefully this will get ported to others, but for now, it's really great on this one. 
Now, RetroWaz also takes advantage of other things that are available on ArcOS. For example, this runs LZ Doom. Now, I wasn't able to get PK3 files to work at this time, so for example, I couldn't play Brutal Doom or anything else like that, but you can run iWADs. For example, you can see here I'm running Wrecker, which is a standalone WAD here, and it looks really nice on this larger display. And don't let my terrible gameplay right here just fool you, it's a lot of fun on this device. Okay, one last firmware here, and this is Lineage OS. And I've talked about this a couple times now in previous videos, but I'm really impressed by this firmware. It's never gonna be my daily driver firmware. It's not gonna be the one that I use exclusively, but there are some really cool things you can unlock with this. For example, the most recent version of this firmware has what's called a no gaps version, which means it has no Google apps on it. So no Google Play Store or anything else like that, which means you're not gonna have any of that overhead taking up any of your system resources while you're playing this. So what you have to do is you have to sideload your apps instead of downloading them from the Google Play Store, but it's a very easy process. And this updated version has mouse mode, so you can use your D-pad as a mouse pointer and then switch back and forth very easily. So all I have installed on this is AMD Link, which allows me to just link directly into my PC and stream everything onto this device. So everything you're gonna see here is gonna require you to have a PC that you can either stream between Moonlight or AMD Link, or even Steam Link. But as you can see, I'm just gonna connect to my computer here. And then here we are, I'm running a program called Big Box, and this is a version of LaunchBox, which basically allows you to load up all of your games onto this one platform and then launch everything through here. So it's basically a user interface for all of your retro emulation. But because I'm running this on my PC, I can do high-end emulators. So for example, PS2, PS3, Wii, Wii U, even Switch can all run through this interface. And it's as simple as just navigating through your games, which are all automatically downloaded with the right box art and everything, and then booting up your game directly in this interface. So you can see I just navigated to God of War and then started up God of War. And because the Odroid Go Super is capable of using five gigahertz Wi-Fi dongles, you have a very good signal. Here on my home network, I have no lag issues. So when I'm playing something like God of War, it feels like I'm actually playing it on my device. I'm getting no discernible lag. So obviously you're not gonna be able to take your Ojoy Go Super out into town and play these games, but if you're just gonna play on your couch, I think this is a really great solution. I've always wanted to go back and play, for example, Metal Gear Solid 2 or the original Okami, and now I can do this on this device by streaming the PS2 versions directly onto my Ojoy Go Super. And first and foremost, I am a Nintendo fan, I've always been my entire life, so I love running through the entire Nintendo catalog on this device. For example, you can see here I'm running GameCube through the Dolphin emulator, and it's running just beautifully, 60 frames per second in very crisp resolution. Not only that, you can go into the Dolphin settings and actually force it to widescreen. And on a high resolution display like this, it doesn't feel very stretched. It's because there's so many pixels here that nothing really feels squashed. So when it comes down to it, I actually prefer to use my GameCube games in this wider aspect ratio because then I can take up the whole screen and it just looks so nice. So again, this isn't something you would take out in town and play, but it's pretty cool to be able to play through Metro Prime from the comfort of your couch or on your bed or whatever you happen to want to do. And probably the ultimate test is whether or not fighting games work well on this game streaming. And as you can see here, I'm playing Soul Calibur 2 and it's a lot of fun. And you're not just limited to GameCube and PS2 games, it's anything that your PC can play. For example, you can play Wii games. But bear in mind, you're going to want to use games that don't require the Wiimote because that would be a little bit awkward. But games like Mario Kart Wii, they work just perfectly. You know, I first played through Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube and it took me like six months because I could only play it 20 minutes at a time and I'd freak myself out and then I'd turn it off. And so if I wanted to revisit that kind of six months of my life, I could do that here on this device as well. And depending on what your PC can handle, you could play all sorts of games. For example, you could even use Yuzu, which is a Switch emulator, and you could play some of those Switch games as well on your device. Honestly, my PC kind of caps out at playing Switch games, so I don't really have the power for this, but I'm just showing you that it is possible depending on what PC you own. Another thing to bear in mind is that you can actually stream emulation for other systems onto your device. So for example, if a Nintendo 64 doesn't run very well on all those various systems, you could just play it through your PC and then stream it onto your device. And it's totally cheating and that's all good, you know, but if you have the PC and you're not using it because you're playing on a handheld device, what's the harm in streaming emulation to it? I was talking to a friend the other day and I said, yeah, man, I played PSP on my PC streaming to my device and I finally understood what it feels like when you play OutRun 2006 at full speed. Because this was the first time I actually played it without any sort of frame skipping and at a higher resolution as well. And now I understand why everyone loves this game, because it's a pretty cool game. I personally just use it for a lot of testing, but now I actually want to play the dang game. 
And now we're getting really deep into the matrix, but you could actually just run RetroArch on your PC and then have it stream to your device. So all of a sudden you're playing RetroArch through your PC, but it looks like you're just playing it on your device. And I think it's just kind of an ironic and funny thing to do. But if you really like RetroArch and you want to make sure you have the best performance possible, this is one way to do that. And again, you could run those RetroArch cores through your device. So for example, here's the Nintendo 64 RetroArch core and it's running just fine. Same thing with Dreamcast, so I could play it here, or I can even use the ReDream emulator. It's really going to be up to you. But you know, when you play this on a PC, you're not going to have any of those issues that you're going to have when you're playing it directly on the device. Okay, I think it's time to put this streaming concept to bed. Let's just move on to some comparisons of these firmwares. Okay, so here's just a quick table to kind of demonstrate some of the differences between these different firmwares. Now on that ROM transfer column, what I'm talking about here is how easy it is to transfer ROMs to your device. So for example, something like Recallbox, you can use both SSH as well as SD. Now with SSH, what I mean by that is that you can transfer your games wirelessly over your Wi-Fi network or however it is you want to connect via FTP onto your device. But you also have the freedom to put your SD card directly into your computer and then move the files over that way. Now with something like Botticera or the Retro Arena, you don't have that ability. You have to only use FTP or SSH only in order to move things across. So those that allow you to use an SD card are going to be more flexible for a typical user. And obviously Lineage OS, this is not an issue because you're not going to use SSH to move things over. All you're really going to want to use that firmware for at this time is for game streaming. Now in the next column, you can see what I think they're best for. So for example, I think that Recallbox in general is really good for users who are comfortable with Recallbox. I didn't really find any advantages of that firmware over the others that would say, hey, you want to check this one out if you're not familiar with Recallbox. But if you are familiar with Recallbox, it's a good solution for you. For Botocera, I think it's really good for those who want to push performance on their device, because like I said, PSP is probably the best on this one, and Dreamcast is really good too. Now something like Emulek, as well as RetroWaz, are really good for all-around users, because the user interface is really great, it has a good amount of ports available to you, and in general it's just a very easy, simple interface to use, and it's a lot of fun. Now those who are really interested in performance and are very comfortable and advanced users when it comes to emulation, I would recommend that RRVL is probably a really good solution for you because it's not for the faint of heart, but you can really get some good performance out of it if you put the work in. And then Retro Arena, like I mentioned before, is a kitchen sink approach. So if you want to play very obscure systems or you just kind of want to see all the various things you can do or you want to load up 10,000 games onto your device, Retro Arena has got you covered. And finally, Lineage OS is really great for game streaming, and I wouldn't recommend it for anything else at this time. I think we'll see improvements to the firmware in the future, but for now, it's really great if you want to stream from your computer onto the Odrigo Super. Now, just a couple side notes for each of these that I just kind of want to run through real quick. Number one, Recallbox, as well as Botticera, do not have Nintendo DS working on it. So if you really like Nintendo DS, those aren't going to be the firmwares for you. Now, Botticera does have working bezel projects, so for example, if you really like your per-game specific bezels, Botticera is your best bet. And it's working on Emiolec, but only in beta phase right now, but I think it's going to be coming soon. If you really like RetroArch, RRVL is good for you. But if you're familiar with Ubuntu and you like working through that, then Retro Arena as well as RetroWaz are both good examples. Now that being said, I mentioned this the other day, but ArcOS is being worked on. I don't know if it's going to get a public release, but at least they're playing around with seeing whether or not they can get it working on the Odrigo Super. So maybe at some point these two are going to merge or something else is going to happen. I'm not really sure at this point, but if you really love ArcOS, you can try either RetroOS or you can wait and see whether or not ArcOS proper is going to actually make it over to the Odrigo Super. And finally, my last note here is that for Lineage OS, a 16 gigabyte card is gonna be just perfect because it should really focus on game streaming. You're not gonna need a lot of storage because you're not gonna store anything other than the apps that you're gonna use for game streaming. So in that case, I think a 16 gig card is plenty. Now, I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not gonna say which one is best. And really, I just wanted to kind of show some of the positives of each of these. Now, for my own personal use, I typically will use Emulek and RetroWaz, and then I always have a card of Lineage OS available at the ready. And so anytime I want to do any sort of game streaming, all I have to do is grab that SD card, pop it into my Odroid Go Super, and I'm streaming. But 90% of the time, I'm just going to pop in either Emulek or RetroWaz, and I'm just going to play my classic games on it. But I really like having that flexibility to say, okay, I've got one card that I'm going to use for emulation and retro gaming and whatnot, and then I have another one where I can kind of stream everything and really push the limits of what I'm doing on this device. 
For me, those are two completely different worlds that are very complementary to each other, and I really appreciate that I can just swap one tiny SD card and get to either of those solutions all at once. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope that this showcase was helpful for you to help you decide which firmware is going to be best for you. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!